So I'm in the middle of uh, basically editing together the main story of Shadowbringers and putting those out as videos, just to give you an idea of like the gap between the time <laughs> line there. But also just to mention, it's getting very, 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 very difficult to find thumbnails and titles and do metadata for it. That is in no way a spoiler. God knows how I'm going to do videos in Endwalker. See how they gather to feed. How they express themselves through their actions, despite their lack of words. Oh, how cute they're feeding. What the fuck? Never thought I'd be feeding lightning sprites. Some describe it as an essence influenced by feeling. I love this scene because it proves that the beast tribes have come up with a theory that is as far advanced in, I guess, a phrological study or whatever, as via science, which completely contradicts the constant trope in fantasy of beast-like people being less intelligent. Dynamis may account for as much as 68.3%. The more abundant form by far. Were we able to control it, we could open the door to limitless possibilities. So it's clear that Arkasha, or Dynamis, or whatever they're calling it, is somewhat key to the final days, because they were talking about that during the apocalypse arc a minute ago as well. I think it's also curious that Hermes here ha becomes in a state of such emotional disarray that he wants to kill himself in a world with him. So how did that come about? Like, it could just be because he's an Asian who's lived for 12,000 years after the downfall of his society. Or it could be that he experimented with this emotional stuff and accidentally backfired on himself. Are we the same? Intellectus. Oh, maybe I am an intellecty. Well, I have been known to transcend my limits with nothing but determination. That sounds more akin to the desperate flailings of a wild beast when facing imminent death. Oh, don't worry, Emmett. You'll get a chance to witness it firsthand. Oh, by the way, I'm a gillionaire. I thought that would give me the uh, the title An Honest Gillionaire, but I guess not. Um, but yeah, I'm probably one of the first people to do this, uh, because I'm one of the first people to experience Endwalker directly after Shadowbringers because of when I picked up the game, but yeah, I literally earned a million gil almost entirely through just questing through the main story. Emmett Selk, Keeper of the Ethereal Realm or Underworld in the vernacular. huh? Hades is the keeper of the underworld? Where have I heard that before? And Azam is traveller of the world and counsellor to the people. That sounds like us. Now listen here, Gubu. Yeah, I know you're not called a Gubu yet. I'm not sure if kittens exist yet, okay? But when they do, they are not your food. Let's just make that clear from the start. Well, for chat mode in say, use your keyboard to enter any phrase containing the words I have a favour to ask. Okay, but it better be the UK spelling that works too. I have a favour to ask. I have a favour to ask. Favour, damn it. I have a favour to ask. Fuck you, game. Emmett Selk has no such shortcomings. He excels in vision and manipulation both, the latter to an extraordinary degree. I believe I've seen him transform <laughs> and maybe poked him with a pointy stick in the middle of doing so. The Kairos allows him to erase or alter memories. Hmm. I wonder if that will come into play regarding my intervention here and try not to change the past. <laughs> flop flop, meteor can't see anything. I like the idea that all of these creatures that we see as monsters in our world were once creations made by a science because it was like a form of art for them to kind of create creations to populate their world with. And then, you know, the final days made them go all crazy and turn into monsters. But look at this dude, look at all of his teeth. Who thought it would be good to design this guy? I must say, I've noticed barely any players in this zone and I think it might be because Everyone who was really excited to play the Endwalker storyline has played it by now. And anyone who's really interested to get into the game probably hasn't got this far yet. I think I'm kind of a rare case in where I was, at what time that I was. Either that, or there's some actual reasoning game where you don't see other players. It's a hedgehog! What a cute little hedgehog! 
I like that they modeled an entire hedgehog just for that one second. Though it is too far to tell, each glittering light could be a world not unlike Aetheris. A world filled with life. So many stars, so many lives. For us, there may be no higher purpose than to live for our world. But what of the other living beings out there? I can tell you one of them has a bunch of dragons on it. And they're still living happily at the minute. But at some point, they're going to flee to this planet. I mean, star. That drives them day after day after day. To pose that question to our undiscovered cousins, I created beings of dynamis who can traverse the vast emptiness between the stars. Oh. Meteon and her sisters. Wait, is there a chance that we're going to find Meteon or her people in an upcoming expansion where we go to a different star? Oh, this is all a setup, isn't it? I have to say, I really like how tragic Hermes as a character is. Maybe it's not tragic, maybe that's not the right word. But he exists in a world of people who don't see beasts as having any kind of soul or emotion or any reason to live beyond art. And meanwhile, he cares for every single living being. Forgive me. Please, forgive me. Aww. May you and your kin find peace wherever your souls may drift in the underworld. May you find tranquil seas. He really cares. And what, pray tell, is that? That's a new species of shark. Wow. We approved the concept, but a few days ago. I love him. I also wonder if he's like a progenitor to the Sahagan. Consideration given to such things as size and environmental impact. And then a whimsical someone thought to bestow it with flight. Another superior intelligence. And then the floodgates burst. Concepts with multiple heads or arms or legs or arms and legs and so on and so forth. It was getting absurd. A part of me wanted to tell them to go away and find something else to create, but in the end I couldn't deny their passion. That finally explains why we have flying sharks. Is this Vanat? Is Vanat a Dragoon? Oh, Vanat. I chose correctly. That was too close. Are you unharmed? Hi, Vanar. Vanar is her name, and she is the previous Azir. Oh. So I wasn't entirely wrong, although I don't think she shares the same soul as Azir. I don't think that's how that works, but it's fun to kind of poke at that and be like, eh, I wasn't technically wrong. I say, have you perchance come from the future? Vanar, shh, don't tell them it's a secret. More importantly, that you should go to such great lengths as to travel unto the past bespeaks the gravity of your quest. Will you not reveal it to us? Mayhap we can be of aid to your cause. Yeah, could you push Hermes off of an edge somewhere? No one will know it was you. It would save me a great deal of trouble. So I am just going to tell them. Because they told me, oh, don't worry, even if we know what's coming, it's not like we'll be able to stop it from coming and change the future or anything. Which is a load of horse shit. I, I have many questions about this game's idea of time travel right now. So I tell him about Heidelin. I'm literally telling them the entire story of the game. Oh my god. While not the words I would have chosen, I too have my doubts. Much of it borders on the incredulous. Yeah, yeah, I'm not fucking surprised. What have you, Vanar? I've just told them that their world is about to be... It is about to end. Uh, they're going to kill half of their entire population to summon a god. Then the entire other half of the population is going to summon another god that's going to cut the world into 14 different pieces. And then thousands of years later, the world's going to end again multiple times. Also, there's going to be time travel and stuff. By alerting us to that eventuality, perhaps you wish to pave the way for other futures. Theoretically speaking, it is a possibility. Oh, what, like, um, like the crystal Yet if that were my primary objective, I see no reason to guide our friend to Elpis specifically. So Hyphladeus is 
theory is that the reason Heidelin sent me here is to rewrite history after all. But that's not the case. I refuse to accept that our world could be undone by some unforeseen calamity. I also take offense to my portrayal as a megalomaniacal madman. To be fair, I think the version of you that's a megalomaniacal madman would also take offense to being called a megalomaniacal madman. Because as you have taken great pains to describe to me, there is no madness in killing people because those people aren't really people. There seems to be some sort of connection between celestial ether and um, the emotional stuff. Dynamus or whatever we called it again. Um, and it seems that Hermes might be the only guy who really knows a lot about it, which is a problem since Hermes becomes Fandaniel and is the very guy who destroys the world through those means. What is it like in the future? Is the world still a beautiful place? Um, well, depends where you go, really. I was overcome with an irrepressible urge to know the world more intimately. To hear its voice. Feel its breath. Listen to its heartbeat? Or think about its... I ventured forth on a journey that very day. So very long ago now. Hear, feel, think. She almost said it. It's Argos! Now this is why he found me familiar on the moon. Ah, what a good boy. Let neither side hold back. Okay. That's a little much. Impressive. I shall have to try something different. Did she just change weapons? Oh hell yeah. This is difficult. Look at that, please. Seriously? Good God. Break your chains, shed your burdens, and show me your strength of will. Look at that, isn't this a little much for a sparring match? Ow. Uh, okay, so I failed that. <laughs> How am I supposed to stop all those orbs from reaching her? God damn. I want to get through the story, so I am going to put it down too easy. If this one shots me again, I'm fucking done. We good? Oh my god. You still stand. The people of your time are more resilient than I had dared hope. I have seen enough. Right. That was a little much than that for a sparring match, wasn't it? Yay, Argos likes me! Hey, pup. You're gonna remember this in 12,000 years, well, right? Well, now. I dare say he has warmed to you. Wow. What a zone, by the way. It was mostly lore and reading and learning, but I'm cool with it. I mean, it did end in one of the hardest single-player battles I've ever had. I mean, I'm assuming we're towards the end, anyway. Whatever intelligent beings that exist out there are bound to be vastly different from us. Diverse in form and culture, possessed of unique ways of thinking. They might be dragons. Their conception of life and its purpose will be no exception. Completely and utterly unlike ours. I mean, how did Midgard Sorma know to come here, right? Probably because of this. It did not teach you how to walk the earth. So loath was I to bind another living being. In the course of your long journey, you will learn from those you meet, learn to walk and run, and so much more. And when you return, older and wiser, we will have a celebration to mark your homecoming, and coming of age both. 
That is absolutely them setting up us meeting an older Meteon and then having to break the news to her about what happened to Hermes. Yes. Upon your return, I will gift you a beautiful flower. And I will have a quest to go and find a flower for her. <laughs> By the way, I haven't brought this up yet, but look how fucking long their necks are. My god. I propose that we reveal your tale to Hermes himself. Hey Hermes. So I'm from the future. Um, after an apocalypse which wipes out your people a few thousand years after that in fact and actually as it turns out you caused a second apocalypse to kill everyone else alongside yourself um, so yeah there's that how are you feeling we must assume that he even knew and was unable to help or that he was otherwise prevented from identifying the cause in the first place or he had already turned quote unquote to the dark side and the original final days was his doing too in terms of for context Dynamus being a cause of the final days. So I'm definitely trying to change the past at this point. Their future, my past. Because Elidibus said I wouldn't be able to. I don't know, dude. I'm I'm confused by this. Because the issue is, right? If I change, if I change it so that even the first final days never happens, then everything I know never happens. All the people. All of Eorzea and the Far East and Garlemald and all of that never occurs. And I don't think that's what I would do. Right? I'm not sure why I came to this conclusion when I think, if I remember right, the whole thing with Grahatia and him averting the course of history didn't unmake the history he came from. It just meant that a new reality was born. Like, it's like an it's like a branching off of a timeline, right? I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Someone let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. But either way, it still doesn't necessarily make sense for Tamaris to change the timeline here, because that doesn't solve any of his problems. Go on then. Tell him what you told us. Who you are and why you came. Oh my god, this is gonna take a while again. Okay, so listen, the first part of this story. You just have to get through, okay? It's good, but later on it gets really good. The key variable, I suspect, is the etheric density of the men of each age. As you know, ether, in essence, negates dynamis. Harboring high concentrations of ether, we ancients cannot readily manipulate dynamis, nor be manipulated by it. Therefore, rather than ourselves, the calamity affected our magics. He's taking this very well. He's even just slipped into calling himself an ancient. Greetings. Can you hear me? What? Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. What? Is this the unveiling of a new villain? I wish only to hear your words. Share your feelings. Know your thoughts. Oh, I'm interested. It's too much! What the fuck? Hey! What the fuck is going on? This is it extraterrestrial? Is wrong. Did Hermes find aliens and then they caused the She's final days? Gone? But how? Oh my god. Dude, this story got fucking interesting. Like, it was already extremely interesting, but it's like got another layer of being extremely interesting now. What is happening? Is this going to be like a Naruto situation where like the main villain of the entire story was only revealed towards like the final 10% of the entire story? What if it's Omega? Omega came from Beyond the Stars, right? What if it's Omega or one of the people like Omega? Hmm. Because we were supposed to do the Omega raid quest series before playing this. Ugh. This is annoying. I know they use this time to build suspense and speculation, but I just want to know what the fuck is happening. Maybe whatever fate befell the people of a dragon star, or sorry, the dragons of a dragon star, is linked to this in some way. Emmett Selk is now accompanying you. Yep. <laughs> I feel like there's bigger concerns right now, but th that is not a sentence I ever thought I would hear. Shit, I forgot he can't mount up. God damn it, Emmett Selk. You slow bastard. It will break him, his poor fragile heart. Is this why he turned evil the first time? Because this shit happened? I'm getting some Sargeras vibes here. Oh, for fuck's sake, I keep forgetting. How far away is he? 
He's all the way of it. It isn't right to turn away from the answer. Even if the answer is pain. So basically, that whole thing was just leading up to her saying that they literally found tons of dead planets or planets in the middle of an apocalypse. Like, there was civilization, but it was all dead. And therefore, what is the meaning of life? And then she returns to be like, well, I guess dying? I don't know. Soul Seer, the third seat all rounder. <laughs> These classes, though. I love that I'm doing a dungeon with ancients. This game just... <sighs> what am I going to do when I finish this game? I can't think of another game that has made me just have my jaw drop this often. This frequently. I just can't get over the fact that I'm doing a boss with pre Hydalin Hydalin, pre end of expansion boss N Emmett Selk, and our old ghost buddy Hyphlum Theus. Wow, I tripped over that name. Hi Hermes. Fought the same guy as a boss twice so in one expansion. It comes to this. Except this time it's his own power and not Zodiac. I have no wish to fight, but this time I cannot you. Let's go and tell Hermes, they said. He won't turn crazy, they said. What a good idea it'll be, they said. Although actually, to be honest, I think this would have happened whether I'd intervened or not. I think this is what made him go mad in the first place anyway. First try, baby! My Hermes, that's first try on both of your boss fights. Have you considered that you might just not be a very good fighter? There we will sing, our chorus ever louder and ever clearer, that our song may reach even this ether shrouded Oh my star. god, is that what prompts the final days? Such is the answer we have found in the stars. Such is the gift we now offer to a fairies. That's metal as fuck. Kairos! Awaken! What is this? Memory reconfiguration system Kairos activated. Oh, wait a second. So this all Come happened? On. Universal memory alteration. Target area. Catesis hyperborea. This is my timeline. I set Done. these events in motion, kind of. Still. If it must be said. Do not squander it. The legacy I leave you. I won't. Final process complete. Executing universal memory alteration. And it all wraps up in a neat little bow. Did not expect Fana to escape with me. Which means she retains all the memories of this day. Which might factor into her decision to create Hydaelyn. Interesting. Though she is unimaginably distant, I feel Meteon's presence. And the place where to we must go. I love that this became an origin story for the true, like, end boss, I'm assuming, of Endwalker. And it's so sad as well. Meteon's basically the same as Hermes, right? This innocent soul who becomes corrupted with like the nihilistic quote unquote truth of all of these fallen civilizations. I am sorry, my friend. I've asked much of you this day. But may I trouble you one last time? Whoever decided to give Hydalin a cute pooch? <laughs> they need a promotion. This Kairos. It manipulates memories through the emission of etheric waves, correct? There is a theory which holds that memories scoured by blasts of ether are restored when the soul is cleansed in the underworld. If true, then perhaps when our time comes to return to the star, we shall remember these few days we have lost. Oh, what a nice way to wrap that up and be like, they remembered. They remembered. So yes, all of my earlier confusion about how this would work with timelines, all of that, as I should have trusted, has been uh, cleared up. Because, hey, I mean, 
I still feel like if I hadn't come back in time, this would still have happened. But the way that it's happened with me being here makes just as much sense. The most important thing that happened was Hermes sending the Meteon to scour the worlds and then the report when she came back and that would have happened whether I was here or not. And that is such genius fucking storytelling. It is only a matter of time until the final days are upon us. So yeah, I didn't capture the whole cutscene, so I should probably give a brief overview of what happened. Basically, because Meteon uh, got corrupted with the, I guess, nihilism of the knowledge of the other civilizations, uh, she and the, I guess, survivors of those civilizations have gone to the edge of the universe where they will use their emotional powers to destabilize our planet from afar. Oh, Hermes lost his memory too. Wait, so he didn't even know that he basically caused the final days. That changes things, but then how does he go mad? I guess he learns about it later. Fare you well, my light of the future. Till we meet again. Dude, that cutscene at the very start of the game where Heidelin's telling me to hear, feel, think. She must be thinking about fucking time. It's been 12,000 years. I sunder us. This is a sundering. No more shall man have wings to bear him to paradise. Henceforth, he shall walk. Oh. This is some deep fucking lore we're getting right now. Yours is a never-ending quest. Oh, are these meant to represent the... the calamities? A quest Whoa. to find your purpose, knowing your end is assured. And to find the strength to continue. When all strength has left you. This fucking cutscene. So I was just like, damn. That was one hell of a dream. Anyway, back to work. So the entire purpose of the story of Final Fantasy XIV is really to show us that pain, no matter how painful life is, it's all worth it, basically. That's what I'm getting from this. And that's fucking beautiful. So, have you learned more of the final days? Yep, I sure have. Look out! It was Graha who did it in the uh, in the game version. I like that. Get out of here! I won't lose them. Not a one. This will be a brighter future. I won't let a madman's apocalypse ruin everything we've fought to achieve. Hell yeah, Graha. I was hoping he'd just one shot at that. That would have been cool. Oh, he did. Fuck yeah. I really like Greta. I'm back. <laughs> I can look after myself, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I like how much faster we took this guy down <laughs> when I was here. God, I really am getting super in tune with my character lately. Even now, my countrymen are preparing the vessel that will deliver us to a sanctuary on the moon. Join us on our journey there and beyond to new horizons. Come to old Charlian. Please. I thought the whole reason they were here is because they discovered a portal to the moon and they didn't need to build a spaceship. I'm confused. Zeno 
Xenos. Here. Helping? What was the point of that scene? Just to remind us Xenos exists? It just popped up and was like, hey. And then we were like, you're an asshole. And he was like, yeah. Lol. Bye. <laughs> it's a drill? <laughs> That's so silly. I don't like it, but <laughs> it made me chuckle. Oh. Did you hear something just now? No, but I have seen that in GIF format. I take it back, it's not Heidelin. What the fuck is happening? Where, oh where is this star's blasted pudding? Oh, it's just pudding, me. God damn it. Um... This game spooked me. It's also something of a convenient excuse to visit a theories. Uriandre made it sound absolutely marvellous. More so before the impending doom, but still. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like there will ever be a better time! What with the aforementioned doom? Yeah, thanks for that. I want to see wide eyes, bulging faces. Lots of shock and amazement. Oh no, we're just taking it like, oh, then this dynamis is what drives the final days. Sorry, did you not hear the part where I went 12,000 years back in time? You know what I've just realised? Meteon is the current, you know, bringer of end times, right? Meteon means meteor. This game can't get away from the idea of a meteor being the end of a world, and I love it. 